He is going to be talking about herbicides on strawberries, factors impacting efficacy. Um, I know that uh, there was, uh, and, and you'll hear even in my own talk that I'll do um, a little bit of discussion from, uh, you know, a, a dry 2018 season that I feel like, you know, can happen anywhere and, and would impact you guys. So, Stephen, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I guess I should start off by saying I'm not Tim Miller. Tim Miller obviously has been doing these talks for 25 years now. And uh, I came down from Alaska a couple of years ago and worked with him. Um, and we did some strawberry trials, which essentially was me spraying everything, picking the strawberries, him gathering the data and writing the reports. So <laughs> I didn't see those reports. Um, but anyway, I have been described um, as a Tim Miller lookalike. Um, for those who don't know Tim. <laughs> And with that, I'll, I'll get on um, with the talk. I, I was told that there's been some problems with, with herbicides and strawberries recently. Either they're not working or they're working too well. And so I designed a talk to essentially go over some of these herbicides, talk about the things to be aware of, um, sort of a refresher course on, on herbicide use. Um, and I got some help from Pat Jones at, at OSU. He, he runs a uh, one of their experiment stations down there in, in weed science and he had a particular problem and I thought it would highlight some of the things that I've been talking about or will have been talking about by the time I get there. So the strawberry herbicides that I'm going to talk about today are these, uh, AIM, Chateau, Debrinol, Prowl, H2O, Spartan, Sinbar, Stinger, and Princep. Um, I sent the slides to Tim days ago for him to look over and then early this morning, he came back with some, some changes. And he said, well, you know, people don't recognize Princep. It should be Simazine. Um, but I'm not going to change all of that. Just know that I'm talking about uh, Princep. I'm talking about Simazine. I have the different groups for herbicide resistance type stuff. And then when do you apply these herbicides? Some of them, like Stinger and Princep, you're only going to put on in the fall and winter. Um, some of these herbicides you can only use post, some you can only use pre, um, others you can do it the same, either post or pre. Um, in Alaska, we did some research up there with some growers and, and, uh, and we proved once and for all when you put a pre-emergence herbicide on weeds that have already grown, um, you're not going to get any control. So it's important to know when you're actually supposed to be putting these things on. Oops. Okay, I am not going to talk about these herbicides. I'm not going to talk about any of the grass herbicides, basically Cethoxidum and Clethidum, um, or Post and Select. I'm not going to talk about any non-selective herbicides because people know when they spray, they're going to be killing everything, and including their strawberry plants. 2,4-D, uh, Dactol, I'm not going to talk about, and I'm not going to talk about any bed renovation products. So I only get in a half a half hour, and, and uh, this is my way of, of shortening it. Um, so first, what I want to do is talk about post-emergence herbicides, and the areas I want to talk about are plant stress, surfactants, weed species, plant sizes, and then some other bits. And there'll be pictures at the end, but at first, it's just going to be a lot of text. Plant stress, when a plant is under stress, whether it's, it doesn't have enough nutrients, there's not enough water, um, there's too much water. If a plant isn't growing well because of stress, all your post-emergence herbicides will not work as well. These herbicides are meant to be sprayed on plants that are actively growing. If they're not actively growing, you're probably wasting your money. You might slow the plants down a little bit, but you probably won't kill them. So just, that's one thing to always be aware of. If you're gonna go out and spray your plants and it's really dry out there and the temperature's up and everything's sort of wilty and, and now you're spraying it, you're not gonna kill those plants. Um, unlike humans, you know, we get a little bit sick and then something bad happens to us, then we go ahead and die. Plants aren't like that. Uh, surfactants. 
post-emergence herbicides may or may not use surfactants. AIM, and this is AIM is a product is, that you're only going to use to be preventing runner production. Um, you, you want to use a crop oil concentrate, a methylated seed oil, or um, a non-ionic surfactant. It's required. The herbicide just is not going to work if you don't have these surfactants. Um, with Chateau, you don't really need a, a, herbis, a, a surfactant added to that if you're applying it post because it's probably going to injure your crop. Chateau will probably injure your crop anyway if you spray it on it. So you use a shielded um, nozzle if you're, you're doing it post. A uh, Sinbar doesn't need a, a surfactant at all, and Stinger doesn't need one either. Um, I know some people that have just gotten in the habit of whenever they mix stuff, they add a surfactant. It's cheap, it's easy, but it could cause crop injury. So read the label and be very careful about that. Surfactants, by definition, are going to increase your, your herbicide e efficacy. It's going to make it hotter. And surfactants, you probably all know, make water wetter. So you break down that surface tension, and now your herbicide droplet can spread out and coat the leaf. The weed species really matter. And I thought about listing all the weed species that they're good on in strawberries, but that would take the rest of my talk time. Basically, on the label, it tells you what these herbicides will do. And different weed species need different concentrations or of, of herbicide. So one thing, one weed species you might be able to get with two ounces per acre, but for another you need three. So read that label to decide what's the actual rate you want to use and base that on the weeds that you actually have. That's what's nice about a post-emergence herbicide is you should already know the weed species that are out there. You know what you're trying to kill because they're already there. Um, so read the label on that one. Plant size matters. With AIM, you want your weeds to be up to four inches tall, and it's going to do a really good job for you. For Chateau, you're only going to get burn back. If you've got cotyledons and maybe a first true leaf, yeah, Chateau is going to take those out. But don't use that on a larger weed because you're not going to kill that weed. A uh, Simbar only works on cotyledons, so you're spraying that early after when you're just starting to see things come up. Uh, stinger, your plant has to be actively growing, and typically it's best pre-flower. So if you're using one herbicide and you're saying, well, I can always use it before pre-flower, that's not going to hold for all other post-emergence herbicides. And so as with people, size really matters. And then other things to know about these herbicides. AIM, especially the rate that you use, is based on the weed species you're trying to control. Chateau has a longer half-life, and so always be a little bit concerned about that because it's going to stick in your soil for a while. Sinbar, it also has a long half-life, um, and it's something you don't want to use on a sandy soil because it will leach down. Um, if you're using Stinger, don't compost that vegetation. In Alaska, we had some issues where people had collected a bunch of vegetation that had been killed with stinger or grasses, essentially, that weren't killed by stinger. The broadleaves were. They composted that stuff and threw it in their garden, and they killed their garden. So the composting process actually increases the concentration of that herbicide because it doesn't break down in the compost. Okay, from there, I'm going to move on to pre-emergence herbicides, and I'm going to talk about timing, incorporation, soils, and then some other comments. Um, and these are the herbicides that I'm going to chatter on about. Um, Chateau, use that in the winter to early spring, and use about half the rate that's on the label. I talked to Tim about this, and he goes, you know, you go full rate Chateau, you're probably going to get some strawberry injury. So go with the half rate. Devernal, only put that on fall to early spring. Same with Prowl. Spartan, only put that on when you're 
plant is dormant. So sometime midwinter is a good time for that. Um, if your plant is growing at all, you're probably going to get some injury, Spartan splash. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Sinbar only use fall to winter, and Princep or, or Simazine, Tim says, say Simazine, um, only use that after harvest through November. Anytime after that, um, there's going to be some crop injury problems. Um, with these pre emergence herbicides, yeah, emerged weeds aren't going to be controlled. So, incorporation, I went through all the labels. I hate reading herbicide labels. I've been in this business for going on 30 years now, and I've never, um, ever gotten to where I enjoy reading a herbicide label. Um, so, I brought them all out to put this incorporation thing in. And it's crazy how different companies do this. So Chateau, you want to irrigate with at least a quarter inch of water. Um, with Devernal, you want to wet the soil two to four inches deep. Well, how does that translate to irrigation? How much irrigation will get that soil wet down two to four inches? Uh, Prowl, you want to wet to weed emer through the weed emergence zone. And as I read this label, I got thinking, well, if a weed seed is below two inches deep, it's probably not going to emerge anyway. The weeds are germinating successfully in that first one to two inches of soil. And a chateau, one quarter inch irrigation should get about an inch deep of soil, maybe a little more. Devernal, two to four inches is pretty deep. Um, Spartan, Sinbar, a half to an inch irrigation, that should wet that first two inches of soil. And, and so as I was going through this, I'm thinking, well, okay, I'm just gonna tell people, get the water down in your soil at least two inches deep, and that might take a half, depending on your soil, to an inch of irrigation, or rainfall. Um, with Princep, you have to irrigate. Um, all these things activate the herbicides. If you spray the soil, and then you don't irrigate, it stays right there at the surface. These herbicides basically work by being taken up by the roots. And if they're not where the roots are, they're not gonna do the, what they're supposed to do. Um, at the experiment station, we planted strawberries and broccoli and everything. We tried to time it all to when there's gonna be a rain event because we have really lousy irrigation system down there. Um, actually, we have a good one but other technicians are better at stealing it before I can get to it. And so we plant just before it's gonna rain because that's what the weather god said. And then what do you know, it doesn't rain. And so we had to go out with ridiculous little sprinklers to try and get these things incorporated. And where we messed up, we didn't get good weed, weed control, which is not a good thing to do when you're trying to conduct research. For soils, um, the top three herbicides here, Chateau, Debrunal, and Prowl, it really doesn't matter what soil you're applying to. There aren't, really aren't any restrictions. For Spartan, though, if you've got sandy soils or coarse soils and your organic matter is less than 1%, don't, don't apply it. Um, you'll get crop injury. Uh, Sinbar, same thing, coarse sandy soils, don't use it. And if your organic matter is less than 2%, again, don't use it. Um, because now it's going to move into the root zone of your strawberries. Uh, Princep, you never use on sandy soils. It leaches right out and goes to the groundwater. And then the Washington Department of Ecology will pick it up in the streams and everybody gets angry. So know your soils. If you've got areas that are sandy, think about not spraying those or treating them with different kinds of products. Otherwise, you're just kind of throwing your money away and probably injuring your strawberry plant. Other things to know, Chateau and Spartan both can injure crop foliage. Tim was telling me Spartan is a little bit hotter on foliage than Chateau is, but still, they're both bad. Devernal, you never want to put on more than four pounds an acre in any given year. With Prowl, don't cover it with plastic. Um, Lisa was giving a great talk about using biodegradable mulches and things like that. If you're going to do that, don't put Prowl on. 
um, that's going to cause some crop injury. Uh, Sinbar, if you're going to use it, you can't plant strawberries back for two years, so be aware of that. And simazine, um, it's much more active in the wintertime. And I'll get into reasons why later. So I want to talk about an injury example that um, Julie Pond told me that she knew about this person. And so I talked to Pat, and he sent me some pictures, and he said, yeah, you can use my name. I'm the guilty guy. I'm the one that did it wrong. Um, but I think it's a lesson for everybody. Um, and this is a strawberry field that they have out at the research and experiment station in North Willamette um, Research and Extension Center. And you can't really see the strawberries very well, but they're, they're doing quite well. So anyway, June 14th, they sprayed the field post over the top with two ounces per acre Spartan and one and a half pints per acre Prowl. Now, Spartan does have post activity, Prowl doesn't, but the strawberries hadn't been planted yet and there were just a few weeds up. And this is sort of standard practice. And that Spartan rate is about half of what the label says. So, you know, it's, it, it seems like it's fairly safe. They planted the field in June, June 22nd, 21st, and that's later than they like to plant strawberries, but in research stations, the scientist that speaks the louder, loudest gets to go. Of uh, the planting temperature, it was 76 degrees, and the next day it was 85, and then 92, and then 99, 102. Um, what are you going to do when you've got strawberries that you've just put in the ground in June and it gets to 100 degrees? Irrigate. And so they put in several inches of irrigation um, to try and deal with it. About three weeks later, they noticed some injury. And the injury symptoms, he said, looked like a fertilizer or surfactant burn. And the plants in the middle of that plot area looked the worst. Um, so I talked to the weed scientist in the area. I don't know who that person was. Um, they assumed that it was Spartan Splash. So the herbicide's on the leaf, and they're thinking, add more water, wash that herbicide off the leaf, and things will get better. So here's July 25th, a few days later, um, after the irrigation. Here's July 31st. You can kind of see this is some bare areas out there. August 14th, now the plants have got some size. You can see out in the middle it's not doing so well. And then August 30th. There's some strawberries that are okay, but the rest aren't. And then we go into September, and pretty much the strawberries out there in the middle are gone. This is an adjacent field that didn't get those treatments, and that's what the strawberries should be looking like September 13th. Um, much healthier, it's what you'd expect to see. And then here is a picture of them side by side. So Spartan Splash, what are the injury symptoms that you typically see when you get that? It should be white spots on the leaves. The, the herbicide works by breaking down the chlorophyll production process. Essentially, it destroys all your chlorophyll, and you have these nice white spots. If you get herbicide drift with something like Spartan, it's great because you can see you know, the sides of the trees are all white and everything. It's like, yes, we've got drift. Um, was this a case of Spartan Splash? Probably it was a case of overwatering and moving the herbicide down into the root zone of the strawberries. And if you look, he circled where his sprinkler irrigation overlapped. And so there was actually more water. And so that middle area got watered too heavily Spartan was moved into the root zone and the strawberry plants were lost. So this is a herbicide combination that he's used before and he's used it last year and he's used it this year and it worked fine. But when he overwatered, it didn't work. It killed his, his crop. So a lesson to all. Um, just real quickly, I don't know how much time I have left. Um, some other concerns why a herbicide might not be working anymore is herbicide resistance. Um, 
there's actually five herbicide groups represented by the herbicides that I've mentioned today. I went through, there's an international um, herbicide resistance survey. Uh, Ian Heap does that at Oregon State University, a, a good friend of mine from way back. And of all those groups, only the group that Devernal is in, um, group 15, all the other groups have plant species that are resistant to them. So resistance is developed to all of those. It's not necessarily here. If, if a weed that you've normally killed with a herbicide doesn't die, let me know. I'm at cfelt at wsu.edu. Um, if we do end up having herbicide resistant weeds here, it's nice to get on top of that before their populations get out of hand. Varietal differences. There's been lots of reports that some strawberries are more tolerant to herbicides than others. Um, I looked hard and long and talked to a lot of people and the science just isn't done yet, but there are people who swear that this variety or that variety are, can tolerate you know, higher levels of herbicides and stuff. You know, you can give it a try, don't get carried away. Um, be tough to, to plant something thinking it could handle something and then it doesn't and I wasted all your money. Um, the other thing generally to herbicides and infects us is that with a soil applied herbicide, it's the microbes that are breaking it down, turning it back into carbon dioxide and water and whatever other compounds it has. There have been cases in North Carolina and Colorado where those microbial populations that use the herbicide as food have actually increased. And now you're putting something down like atrazine, which should give you four or five weeks of control, and now you're only getting two weeks of control because the microbes that break it down, their populations have increased so much that they eat it all up and it's not there to control the weeds. So that's something to be concerned about. Um, when soils are warmer, the microbes are more active and they break things down faster um, in addition. So like simazine uh, works a lot better in the winter time because it's not getting broken down where it breaks down real easily in the summer when the soil's warm. So if there's any herbicides that I failed to chat about um, or any other more specific kinds of questions or problems you have, this, if there's time we can just you can shout at me and I can um, try and figure that out. If there's research you'd like to see conducted, I'm actually a scientist for hire of soft money at WSU. So <laughs> always looking for additional work and, uh, and I'm comfortable using a spray boom and my required WSU slide. Are there any questions for Steven? Okay. <laughs>